on the Mini today, 2003 Cooper S. Power steering pump. These are expensive to replace. If you're having trouble, should you buy a second-hand one or repair the old one? We'll go through some options in this video. I rebuilt the power steering pump in this car three years ago. Uh, it has been working fine up until now, uh, but recently the pump keeps running after you turn the engine off. Ignition off, everything's off, the pump's still running. It's electric hydraulic power steering. This part is your actual hydraulic pump. It's been turned by an electric motor. So that's a little bit different to other cars, right? Uh, often what'll be turning this is the auxiliary belt. As I'll explain later in the video, there's a control circuit in here. Looks like this. If your pump's running on, often the problem is these two MOSFET transistors, if they blow, it can run all the time. Now, as well as wearing the pump out, it's going to drain the battery nice and quick. You're going to be potentially left stranded somewhere with a dead battery. You want to disconnect that battery. If it's a Mini Cooper, the battery's in the front. For the Cooper S, the battery's in the boot. For the Cooper S, you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble because the, well, the boot will close fine with the battery disconnected. But because it's an electronic switch, it won't open again and you won't be able to get to the battery. So if you're disconnecting the battery, make sure you fold down the rear seats and remove the parcel tray before you close the boot. You can still access the positive terminal. Three parts covered in this video. Firstly, is the pump the problem? Secondly, how to repair your existing pump? Third, buying a second-hand pump? How to clean it up and test it? What I won't be covering, how to remove the pump from the car. There's already some Great videos on how to do that. I will leave those linked in the description. So what if your problem isn't the power steering pump keeps running, it's that the power steering doesn't run at all. You have very heavy steering. Just because you've got power steering problems doesn't mean the power steering pump is broken. The other possibility is some of the logic circuits are not working properly. For example, if you turn the ignition on, notice there's a battery indicator just here. That tells you if you're getting charged from the alternator. If I start the engine, that should go out. If it's not going out, then the alternator is not charging and the power steering pump will not run. To understand other reasons you can lose power steering, uh, we need to look at the how this thing is wired. So here's the pump. You've got two connectors going on. This big one with the big heavy cables, that's the main power plus and minus running to the battery. And then you've got these three small wires. Those are the logic control. These need to be sending the right signals in order for this to power up. The big thick red wire going to the battery that's always on. The big thick earth wire, which is brown. So if you're not getting power coming in from that, uh, there is that FL4 100 amp fuse under there. So the big thick cables have this brown uh, insulation and it gets its power from this fuse box. Just popping this off, you won't be able to see it. You actually have to pull this whole fuse box out. The big fuses, the big 100 amp fuses are underneath. So you'll take air box, ECU out, disconnect this, turn it upside down. You can access that fuse. The heavy ground wire is bolted to the body of the car beneath this. Through this little connector, needs to see 12 volts from the alternator and it needs to see 12 volt from ignition for this to turn on. Until you start the engine, that the alternator starts generating power, generating at least 12 volts, that you get the second condition met via the yellow. So if your alternator fails, your power steering pump won't turn on. It's just cutting it off and saying, no, we're not gonna draw a whole bunch of power if the alternator's failed. So hopefully you can then also see that if the circuitry inside the pump fails, then the pump can run all the time because it's always connected to the battery. These two MOSFET transistors, if they blow, it can run all the time. And with this one that's causing trouble, see that's going to zero. So it's an open circuit. So what are your options? You could buy a brand new pump. Original equipment is a ZF brand pump. Where I am, a brand new pump's gonna cost thousands just for the part. A remanufactured one, half, at least half that price. The other option is to delete your power steering entirely. I, I did attempt this, but in hard cornering, the weight of the steering would really load up to the point where I was having trouble placing the car where I wanted it on the road. So in this video, I'll go. Th I'll focus on two options. One is repairing the old pump and replacing the bits that normally fail. Uh, the other option I'll go through is if you bought a second-hand pump, 
uh, how to tear that down, clean it up, test it, uh, and make sure it works before you go to the trouble of installing it into the car. How to take the pump apart, well I've covered that in a previous video, I'll leave that linked in the description, but I'll give you a 30 second recap of how to get this thing apart. So what do these MOSFETs actually do? They're basically a switch or a bit like a relay if you like. To test these MOSFETs, I'll go through and just explain how they work. It's got three pins that come off each MOSFET. One is the positive to the battery, one is the negative to the battery, and this third one is the on-off switch. So how do we test if the, these MOSFETs are actually working or not? Multimeters have a setting here for testing diodes. So that little symbol there is the diode test negative on this pin okay negative on here and positive on here right so that's showing nothing there but then if we touch the red on here what there supplying a little bit of voltage turning it on put it there and now we can see that reading drops so that's working and it's still on so i just touch it to earth it out okay and then that should go back to a uh, to an open circuit if you choose to replace the MOSFET, so what are you looking for in finding parts? Uh, firstly, the form factor, if you like, that's described by this TO220. Original MOSFET is this 2N040, and I've heard of people having success with IRF 3205 or a 3206. I couldn't find any of those locally. So what I ended up buying was the IRF1405. Going through the data sheets, I thought these met the standards, but they did blow after just a few drives. Before I desolder these pins, I'm just going to cut off MOSFET. That way I've got easier access to pull them through. Go, I'll chop that off, and I will um, desolder these pins gently into the vise to hold it steady. And we'll just push those pins up straight. I'm going to pull it from one side. Right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on here. It just takes a bit of a wiggle to get that to pull through. There we go. Here's another one out. So take those uh, three pins out on each one of them. Notice I've gone for a finer point on the soldering iron. So we need to measure these out to know where to bend them. So I'm pushing them in until these little guides stop. Little guides there. There's little plastic bits sticking up here that line up with the edge of these. Marking it with a pen at each hole. Okay, so we're just going to bend these down 90 degrees. Trim this one off a bit. How to put it all back together, that's covered in my other video, which is linked in the description below. Now the pump is just sitting there. I've connected the two wires and I will reconnect the battery just to sit, make sure before I do the full installation. It's not running, which is a good sign. This is one of those times where you hope you plug it in and nothing happens. I put it back together and it was uh, running fine for a couple of days at least, and then it failed again. So let's see what went wrong. Just to see what the problem is. If I touch these two pins, no resistance. Open circuit, so it's blown again. So what, went, what did I do wrong? I'm not sure. Did they just fail? So when it's all together, the control module is sandwiched between the hydraulic pump and the electric motor. These bolt to the housing which then bolts up to the hydraulic side. I'm guessing that essentially means it's getting some uh, cooling heatsink from the hydraulic side. The middle pin, which is the positive, connects directly through to this plate. So this is live. You want heat passing through there, you don't, do not want current passing through there. So these little pieces of 
plastic are quite important. Then the dilemma for me was, should I be putting some sort of thermal conduction paste like this Arctic Silver? So I went to the wreckers yard and found a second hand pump. It was quite an old car, it was an April 2001 build. So uh, I thought, well, I'll definitely be in for a rebuild on this one. Taking it apart, though, I suspect it is a remanufactured pump. Old pump, orange capacitors, new pump, blue capacitors. Any telltales on the outside? Here's the old pump. Now it has a uh, BMW on there. It's a ZF pump. They don't seem to have, I, I can't work out any date code on these. Leave a comment if you know how to read dates. I, unfortunately, the fluid leaking on this, it washed off the numbers. But what I can make out is it does not say BMW there. It's still a ZF pump. Uh, but this sticker is different. It's a shiny silver sticker. That one's a white. I, I probably got lucky in finding a, a car old enough that the pump had already failed and, and been replaced. First, disassemble the used pump uh, as per the previous instructions and the link video below. Give it a good clean up, get rid of all that dust. Use contact cleaner, you don't want all that dust in your lungs. So, and then you can move on to testing to make sure it's all working correctly. Most important is testing these MOSFETs, which I've covered already. First, we can just test that it connects properly through to the power. So that connects through from the negative terminal through to the pin on this side for both of these. So this one connects to this metal leg, supplying the power from the input via this big uh, shot key rectifier diode into the MOSFET. So to test this big uh, rectifier diode, again we're in diode test mode. Test it uh, forwards and backwards. Firstly with the negative on the middle pin and the positive on the outside. Right, this particular one measures, uh, does the diode test in millivolts. Okay, so test that one and the other one. Both sides getting about 80. Now if I swap them, positive on the middle pin, they should both um, max out. Okay, so that one's working okay. There's the part number if you do need to replace it. Now I haven't heard of these capacitors failing, but it is possible. You can do a visual check, make sure they're not puffy. Uh, you can also check on the, if you've got a check resistance. Um, if you've got a multimeter with the capacitor test function, you should be getting similar readings on all four. 8.4. Point to check are these brushes. Check you still have some brushes actually left. The other one that I've put on, the uh, one that looks reconditioned, the brushes are certainly twice as long. Also check the surface here on the motor. I've given these a clean up with some 3M wool before I put them back in. Check there's no shorts across there. So that covers testing most of the uh, high amperage components. I haven't tested the low amperage signaling side because I haven't seen that fail. Reassembly is covered in the video linked in the description. Main point to note is you'll be resoldering these contacts through to the brushes here. That pump is all back together. And uh, before I get it all the way in, we'll do a quick bench test and I'll make use of the Mini's battery. So we've got positive running off there. I've got an earth down here. Negative, positive. Now for this one, there's three pins in here. One and two need 12 volts fed to them, not three. Okay, that's a signal why I keep clear of that one. So then when I complete this logic loop with the 12 volts, it should run. I hope that was useful. Please do leave a comment if you've uh, got any more tips for, for other people who are attempting this at home.